So at this point, I have um, I've generated my roughing path, and next thing I want to do is um, I want to take advantage of the fact that I'm running a quarter inch tool right now. Generally, what I would do is after roughing, I would do my finishing path, and then I would come in and clean up the edge all the way around. Uh, there's some material that's left here after uh, the roughing path, uh, and that material that's left over is defined through the roughing path under the cut parameters. You can see that there's a stock option here that's set to 0 0.025, so it's leaving 0 0.025 inches of material uh, throughout the whole model, wherever it can with the size of the tool and shape of the tool. Um, so really to, to nail that final surface, I need to come in some other way and clean that up. And uh, typically, I would do this as a last stage, but because we want to be doing, the, we want to just use two tools, and time is kind of uh, critical for what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and run this right now. So this next step is going to go through that stage. So I want to grab a curve. I'm going to duplicate this face again, this bottom face and then go into one of my side views here, take that curve and I'm going to move that down, snap from the end, I'm going to move it down a sixteenth of an inch using my shift key making sure that it's straight down so I have an offset and now I can go in and set up my my next operation which is going to be a two and a half axis operation so this is going to use a profiling option and as far as the curve that I want to use I'm going to select the curve here and select that so that's the curve that I just created go under my cut parameters and since this is going to be a finishing operation of sorts I, I want to get really close to that final surface so under tolerance I'm going to bump that up by one zero so uh, ten thousandth of an inch um, I'm going to set this cut direction to climb cutting and then under cut levels I want to um, locate the, the cut geometry. I'm going to locate it at the bottom because this curve is at the bottom of my cut. Now the reason I'm, I'm doing this is because I, I want the cutter to actually go extend beyond the object just a little bit. It's going to actually cut into a sacrificial board of MDF and that'll give us a really nice clean edge on the bottom. As far as the total cut depth If I look at this, um, I want to think about this in reverse almost. So what's my cut depth? My cut depth is going to be wherever the, the highest point of my object is. And uh, if you look at the very bottom of Rhino's screen, in this case my y-axis as I'm moving up uh, is showing me the offset from zero. So I'm at about 1.4. It's actually 1.374, but I'll call it 1.4. So that's going to be my total depth cut. And I think that looks OK. So I'm going to hit Generate. And it's going to take a, an extra bit of time because of that tolerance that I've set. So just give it a second, and it'll do its calculation. Another way to, to, to deal with the, the tolerance that I just set is to keep everything loose at the very beginning until you know exactly what you want. And then you can tighten things up at the very end by just redefining those paths that, that, that are your finishing paths. And uh, that'll sort of cut down on the amount of time that it takes if you're experimenting with stuff. Okay. So if I turn on my toolpath now, uh, you can see the path is on the outside of the curve, which makes sense, uh, and that's compensating for the diameter of our tool. 
but you also notice that it's it's essentially going to go straight down and do the whole thing and I want to take this in in little chunks so I define that within my ax my profiling operation under my cut levels right here so cut depth per cut or rough depth per cut right now it's doing the whole thing 1.4 as I move this down um, this is the distance it'll go per step as it's going down and I probably want to set this to uh, I would say the actual diameter of the tool so in this case 0.25 So I'll regenerate that, and you can now see the steps that it's taking. Now one final uh, nuance that we could get into is how the tool actually approaches. Right now it's going straight down, cutting, straight down, cutting. Uh, we might redefine that part under entry and exit. So right now there's, there's no sort of definition for that. It's just going straight down. Uh, we could go, give it a 2D entry, and that'll enter on an arc, like you see there. So when I regenerate that, that now comes in nicely. Okay. So if I wanted to re-simulate this, generally when I simulate, I prefer to simulate the whole, um, the whole set of operations, not just the last one that I did, uh, because I found that there are some bugs sometimes with the preview and things don't look quite the way they should. And so now you can see what that last operation did. As I click on it, you can see it's sort of receding in uh, right to that line right there. So I've defined the outside of the shape and uh, I think I actually forgot to set my speeds here. No, it actually carries it over as long as you're using the same tool. And right now I only have one tool. It'll keep using those those figures. I would probably, uh, because this is a, a finishing operation, I would slow things down just a little bit. So as far as my feed rate, I might go down to 80 from 120. From 120. And uh, and here you can see it'll take uh, two and a half minutes to cut for that. The, uh, the third operation I need to do is to define this top surface now. And I've been using just a flat mill for both those operations. If I double click, I can come in here and set my next tool, which is going to be a quarter inch ball mill. Save it. OK. And uh, parallel finish is what I'm going to use. You want to make sure that the ball mill is set. And if it's the last tool that you just created, it should automatically be set to that. I'm going to, um, I'll leave this at 80. Uh, that's pretty good. I probably wouldn't go too much faster than that. Under uh, cut parameters, again, this is going to be a, a finished operation. So I'm going to add a zero to my tolerances. And I'm going to set this to 5% of the diameter and generate. And uh, if I look under my simulation now, So what I have now, if I were to look and compare my my uh, my stock, my current stock with the original model, you can see that there's um, there's quite a few areas where the, the the mill just simply can't get in there and define um, those valleys without uh, starting to cut into the object itself or into the model itself. So uh, this is really where judgment comes into play as far as 
what your uh, your smallest tool should be and how much time you you can afford to to spend cutting. But what I what I'm going to do in this case is actually set up a um, a smaller tool instead, and I'm going to save this as a new tool. And I'm going to literally just copy and paste my parallel finishing operation that we just did, and uh, set my tool to be that new ball mill. And actually, well, yeah, maybe maybe before doing that, I want to set my uh, feed and speed to. Um, I want to set my spindle speed to 15,000, which is the max that the machine will do. Oh, didn't finish. OK, and uh, I'm going to go into simulate. And again, I'm going to simulate the whole thing. I'm going to just pump this up, make it go a little bit quicker. So this is the, the quarter inch version. And by the way, when you select one of these, you need to give it time to actually update visually. It sort of lags behind a little bit. But you can see um, the quarter inch version is leaving quite a bit of material behind here and obviously in here too as it tapers in. The eighth, in ver eighth inch version should show uh, no material left behind here and uh, you can see that it gets a lot closer to the final final shape. So you can see at this point, this is my the diameter of my smallest bit, the eighth inch bit, and uh, and you can see that it's just it's not going to be able to remove or get down in here without actually starting to interfere with the the model itself. So the moral of that story is uh, you either uh, live with not being able to get all the material removed or you go with an even smaller tool and uh, even longer amounts of time to get that done. Uh, Time-wise, be the, the difference between a quarter inch and uh, the eighth inch, that's a quarter inch, an hour and 22 minutes. And uh, the eighth inch is an hour and 58 minutes. So it's really not that much more time. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll see you at the next video. Thanks.